How do you know what you know? If you're like most people, you probably haven't thought about this question. But you should. And really, it's pretty interesting. Think about it. Most organisms come into this world with all of the knowledge they need programmed into them instinctually. Now, other organisms have room for individual learning that they can layer on top of that. And so they know what they know by virtue of the genes they receive from their parents. Consider a sea turtle. As soon as it emerges from its nest in the sand, a baby sea turtle knows immediately how to get to the sea. And once it's there, it knows how to start foraging for food. Compare that to a human baby. We consider ourselves to be the most intelligent species on the planet, and yet we're born stupid. Seriously, we may grow up to become physicians or dentists or lawyers or star athletes or astronauts, but we start out in this world unable to use a bathroom, much less find our way to the sea or find our own food. We know how to cry, recognize faces, and learn language, and really that's about it. So clearly, for us, individual learning and genes aren't enough. We have to get information from other sources. In fact, to become fully functional human beings, we need a lot of information. So where do we get all that information? Well, in the early years, we get most of our information from our immediate family. Parents, grandparents, perhaps some older siblings. But as we grow older, our social circles expand and we start to get information from lots of other sources as well. And that's an amazing adaptation. It's allowed us to radiate and adapt all over the world in all sorts of different circumstances. And we can adapt rapidly to a changing world. But it presents a problem too. How often do all of those sources agree? It doesn't take long before we start running into conflicting information. How are we supposed to make sense of a confusing information landscape? Well, one option might be to test every bit of information that comes our way. Obviously, that isn't going to work, right? If we took the time to fact check every bit of information that came in, if we put everything to some sort of empirical test, it wouldn't take long before we're unable to learn anything at all. That should give you some sense of the amount of information that we have to take in, that we're not able to test it. Instead, we develop heuristics, guidelines that help us distinguish between reliable and unreliable information, to distinguish between justified belief and mere opinion. Everybody does this. Think about it. All of you have that one person you will go to in the family to find out what happened. You just know from experience that that person's going to give you the true story. Now, you probably also know five other people in your family that you won't go to because they're going to give you a biased account or they have self-serving motivations or they're manipulative or maybe they're just off the rails. Importantly, what information you trust depends on context. You probably don't go to that same person that you went to for family gossip to get medical advice or to get career advice or to get spiritual advice. We move in and out of different social situations and in each one of those situations we have different guidelines that we use to decide what information to trust. And by the time you're an adult, you learn how to navigate this really complex landscape without giving it any thought. But you should give it some thought. It's really actually important. In fact, it's so important that there's an entire school of philosophy dedicated to its study. Philosophers call this process that we've been talking about epistemology. And epistemology is how we know what we know. How do we distinguish between justified belief and mere opinion? Now, by this point, many of you may be asking yourself, what does any of this have to do with technical writing? Have I downloaded the wrong video? Am I signed up for the wrong class? No, what epistemology has to do with technical writing is, in a nutshell, everything. You've spent years learning science facts. Those facts were generated using the scientific method. So let's take a moment to appreciate all of the things that science has generated. By virtually every metric, our lives are better than those of our ancestors. 
longer life expectancy, better health, better material well-being. This is a phenomenal accomplishment. However, how science knows what it knows is frankly peculiar. Not only is it unusual in the way it generates new knowledge, but it takes years of specialized training to understand and to be able to participate in its generation of new knowledge. Now, most people in the world don't understand the world in this way. They use different heuristics to make sense of the world around them. They use different epistemology to distinguish between justified belief and mere opinion. This has probably never been more evident than it is right now in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm sure many of you probably know someone or perhaps many people who don't trust the information coming from physicians or scientists or epidemiologists or public health officials right now. That's because they trust different kinds of information. Now, if you think you can change their minds, if you think you can persuade them, if you think you can adjust their beliefs, behaviors, and practices based on a better understanding of science, through more careful empirical investigation, through citing the best journal articles that are out there, you are living in a dream world. And so we begin our explorations of technical writing with epistemology for two principal reasons. First, a hallmark of scientific epistemology is the honest, open, and transparent sharing of information. That, combined with the sheer amount of information that bombards scientists on a daily basis, seriously constrains and structures scientific discourse. A lot of the conventions of scientific writing will seem bizarre if you don't understand the process by which science generates information. Note, too, that understanding how that information is structured is going to help you as you do your research for your capstone project this semester. Second, no matter where your career takes you next, you will be interacting professionally with people who have different epistemology from you. They are going to have a different way of coming to their understanding about the world. The only way you can persuade those people to change their beliefs, behaviors, or practices is to understand their epistemology, how they know what they know. And the best way to start to understand other people's epistemology is to really carefully reflect on your own. So how do you know what you know? That's the foundational question we use to begin our explorations of biomedical writing.